bedrooms, the best pies in Chanwell, regular live events and almost no fights. Come down to the Weir, a warm welcome awaits. Welcome to Chandwell. This is the Weir, a grand old inn. I had a lot of fun with this build and hopefully you'll enjoy this video. So we're going to look at the steps I went through to build this pub and I'm also going to take some time to show you some of the smaller details that are scattered around it that you might otherwise miss. I wanted an inspiring looking pub and I stumbled upon this, the new Beehive in Bradford. It's a beautiful double fronted stone built pub and it fits in with the architectural style of Chandwell very nicely. It's got these lovely curved parapet walls and lots of challenging elements like the glass sign above the door. I had a really challenging space to put the pub into opposite Iron Bridge Works with the viaduct curving one way and the river the other. As ever with my buildings I used cereal packet to mock up the shape first. I did a couple of attempts and I eventually settled upon this parallelogram type of shape. The front and the back are the same size, they're just offset so the side walls are on at an angle. I was a little bit concerned I'd struggle to get it glued together without gaps or overlaps but I did manage it. And if we look here at the finished article it's the exact shape that the cornflake packet mock-up was and I'm really pleased with how well it fits. With the shape of the building decided, I could start its construction. I designed it in Inkscape as I do with all of my buildings. And I start from the inside and work out. This is the ground floor with the carpet, using white lines to show the main room, the porch and two smaller rooms at the back. This is the front. I use York's magnetic mates, plastic right angled clamps and normal PVA glue to start the construction. Simply use a fine tip applicator, put PVA along one of the white lines that I'm using to show where the ground floor goes. And the ground floor isn't at the bottom because I'm building it into the hillside. The road and the side of the river are higher than the baseboard. The clamps just hold the piece up straight and square like this. Next, I'm going to put the back on. Because I start with the inside and work outwards, it's quite easy to put an interior in as we go. I don't know how much of this will actually be visible through the windows, but I put a little bar in and a few tables and I put the impression of a bar on the back wall. And I keep building like this upwards. Here's the first floor going in. It works in the same way as the lower floor. I've got the white guidelines on to show me where it goes. It's starting to look about how I wanted. I've recessed the front door in to give it a bit of a porch, just so I can have a nice tiled floor. It's just as easy to print wallpaper and doors as it would be to print bare walls. So adding the interior is actually quite simple. Here's the first floor in place. You can see the makeups of the rooms. I haven't bothered with corridors and things like that. It's just an impression I want to give here. Every time I added a floor, I kept checking how it was looking. It's going to look really good, I think. It's a shame that the walls are going to cover most of this up. And depending upon where I put the lights, some of this will never be seen at all. By checking the building in place constantly as you build, it's always possible to make small adjustments if you need to. The front door is a little bit higher than the road because I want to have a couple of steps leading up to it. The only way you'll see the front door is if somehow you could look down the archway of Iron Bridge Works like this. Once the first floor was in place, it was time to start adding the lights. I used just very simple LEDs and I wire them in series, soldering them together as I go. I test the lights and then just roughly place them into the building. I try to put them towards the edges of rooms in such a place that they're not visible through the windows because I think a bright light shining out the window ruins the effect. 
we don't always get this right. Once they're in place, they're just wired up as a chain throughout the building and I hold them in place using red tape. You can see here, I've looped them from the bottom over the top floor and then down to the bottom where the resistor is. And that will be wired through the bottom of the layout into my wiring loom. So this is it, this is the inside of the building more or less complete. I forgot to take into account the shape of the roof on these interior walls so I had to slice them um, just with a scalpel. I think it's going to be okay. I cut little notches in the interior walls just to hold the lights. For the light above the door I'm using this wall mount light using the Woodland Scenics Just Plug system. Um, I don't actually have the just plug system so I'm not using the just plug part of it um, I just wanted the light itself. These things are absolutely tiny. Um, I think it's, it says it's four millimeters but I think it's actually smaller and the wires are incredibly thin as well. Of course I glued the front into place before I remembered I even had this light so I had to fettle my way through it by drilling through the front of the completed pub and then using some cotton thread to pull the wires through. These wires are incredibly delicate but we got there in the end and that is also just soldered into the main wires at the bottom of the pub. I use red tape to hold the roof into position while the glue dries. It's a little bit stronger than masking tape but it's still not sticky enough to, act to stick to the surface and ruin it. This is a great way to hold the roof down while the glue dries. When I make a building, I normally leave the tiling of the roof until almost last. But this pub is different. Because of the front and back parapet walls which extend above the height of the roof, it made sense to get the tiles on first. I use the scale scenes as tiles, which involves cutting strips a few millimetres wide and placing each one individually on top of the previous one so they overlap slightly. It's a time consuming process, but I find it strangely relaxing the effect, once it's all trimmed, is really spectacular. It's a subtle 3D effect and it really does look like the tiles are individual rather than strips upon strips. Once the front and the back were on, it was time to add the capping for the parapet. For this, I just use a thin strip of card and a strip of scale scenes texture from the dark random ashlar sheet. All we need to do is place the strip of card in the middle of the strip of paper and then fold the paper around it. Once the glue is dry on the strip, it's simply a case of cutting parts of it to the right size to fit along the roof. Here I am doing the last bit of this side. I use just eye, I don't use measurements, I just get it about right, slice a little bit off and place it onto the building. Sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error to make it smaller and smaller, shaving off bits, but we get there in the end. So this one's overlapping a little bit and needs to be fettled a little bit further. The sides of the pub were basic pieces of card, but the challenge was the chimneys. Because the chimneys are on the outside of the parapet, but also need to continue on the inside, I wrapped the chimneys in two pieces. I used the back of my scalpel to help fold the paper, and then I fold the bottom part of the chimney right round. This is the bit that's on the back of the parapet that goes into where the roof is. Once that was done, I folded it tightly round, and then put glue on the back of the whole thing and attached that to the inside of the side wall. The flaps that were left were there to go around to the front. I glued these down tightly and then once the glue was dry I trimmed off the excess. I used a brown pen to take off the white edges of the paper before sticking the chimney covering down. I simply fold it tightly around the chimney. To fix it to the side I needed to cut out a slot of the roof did this more or less by eye. It didn't have to be absolutely exact because the roof tiles would cover any gaps that are left. A final check with both chimneys in place and I think it's going to look okay. Just used normal PVA like usual. Made sure to get around the LED wires. Used a piece of card on the front so I knew I was getting it into exactly the right place to make fitting the front of the building easier later on. Once I was happy that it was in the right place I simply tipped it on end and piled a few books on top until the glue dried solid. The most challenging parts of the facade were obviously the tiny windows 
but getting nice clean curves on the pediment at the top. I use a heavy knife and a steel rule to do the horizontal parts, and then I use my scalpel with a fresh blade to do the curves. When working with curves, I always cut from the inside out so that my hand is on the inside of the curve. This helps me keep the blade straight. I take my time and I use lots of small light strokes and I go over and over and over it until eventually I get a nice clean curve. The trick with a facade like the new beehives is working out what components to make it from. This is end scale, so we can't go down into really, really minute detail, but we want enough to be able to give a hint of what the building really looks like. I used strips of cereal packet covered in two different textures. One was a light stone texture, which I took from the scale scenes ashlar sheet, and one was a darker stone texture, which was taken from the dark random ashlar sheet. I cut strips and then started adding it to the front of the building. So I'd cut out a little bit, get it to the right size, paint the edges and then stick it to the front of the building. I'd repeat this over and over until I had all of the horizontal and vertical lines in relief across the front of the building. I was on with this for well over an hour but the effort really paid off. I was really pleased with how it looked. Here we are at the end. Um, I've added all the different bits on in layers as you can see. Some bits are thicker than others and I think it worked really well. It gives the impression of the new beehive without being a faithful reproduction to it right down to the last detail. When it came time to attach the front to the skeleton I used Uhu glue rather than PVA. That's because I wanted to get a strong bond almost straight away. Uhu is good in that it gives you a little bit of play time so you can move it around before the glue sets. A glue like Rocket car glue grips almost instantly, so it doesn't really forgive any mistakes. I used plenty of pressure to push it down, and I also used clamps. There wasn't much space on the building to get clamps in, but where I could use them, I do use them. They're a godsend, these things. I had to stay here like this for a good couple of minutes while the glue set. It wasn't until after it had set I realised that I'd put it on a millimetre or so too far to the left. I had a bit of an overlap of the side wall, which meant I couldn't put the brickwork on that I intended. And in the end, I had to file it away with a little file and then just paint the edges. I thought I might have ruined it at this point, but on the finished article you can't tell and I managed to get away with it, thankfully. I tried a new technique when it came to adding the downspouts and I'm really surprised with how well it worked and how easy it was. I essentially just chopped a straight edge down some cereal packet and then coloured in the edge and both sides of it with Sharpie pen. This made it a nice black colour. I simply took my ruler and moved it as close to the edge as I possibly could using a very, very sharp blade. It needs to be sharp because you need a very clean cut. I just basically went down in a few light strokes and cut off a tiny sliver of the cereal packet. Once I had that, it was simply a case of putting some very, very thin bead of glue down the front of the building and then placing the sliver of card on top. Use a ruler to keep it nice and straight. The PVA grips it really tightly because the card is so light and it just goes on really nicely. And once it's stuck, it becomes a really solid part of the building. I'm really pleased with how well this worked out. The letters on the front that make up the name of the pub, I bought this laser cut lettering from Scale Model Scenery. Each letter is 4mm high. It was really tricky to cut them out of the sprue cleanly without leaving a little nib and I couldn't really file them down because these letters are so fine I didn't want to risk destroying them. Once they were cut out and stuck to little bits of blue tack on a pot, I painted them matte black. Once this was dry, I used Valero Old Gold paint to gently dry brush the letters. I didn't want them to be super clean and shiny, I just wanted the gold to be there as a hint, with mainly the black giving a nice dark undertone. I gently applied tiny dabs of PVA glue at the positions where the letters would need to go. Using the tweezers, I very gently placed each letter one by one into its position on the pub. Give them a final adjustment while the glue is still wet, and this looks really good. It's exactly what I was looking for. For the glass sign above the door, 
I printed a strip with the weir written on it twice. I tried to make it look like the stained glass of the new beehive. By bending it around a pen, we introduce a gentle curve. We want this to be semicircular. I used a tiny piece of Uhu glue on the back side of the paper and glued the left edge to the little bit of protruding stonework sticking up above the door. I let this glue dry for a while and once I was confident it was stuck, I then gently bent the other side round and glued the right hand side of the paper to the right hand side of the stonework. I was almost finished the pub and I was ready to glue the front on when my friend texted me and said you should model the cellar doors open and I knocked together using just card this cellar ramp. I'd already included a recess in the front of the pub to show where the cellar would have been, but I modelled it bricked up originally, so it was fairly simple to cut out the front of the inner skeleton in such a way that it would fit over the top of the cellar, like this, so you'd be able to see the cellar descending underneath the pub into the darkness below. I was a little bit nervous to actually committing to the project though, because the front was finished and it would mean that I'd have to cut through the completed frontage and cut a hole too small to start with and then I gently increased its size using the sharp scalpel. I got there in the end and once it was complete and it looked as though it was the right size to fit over the cellar steps. To get it to fit into the baseboard though I needed to perform some further surgery on the bridge and the road itself. It was fairly straightforward to cut a notch out of the road. There was this piece of wall in the way though which was coming off the old bridge. I carefully removed that with a scalpel. So on the whole, once I've added some open cellar doors this little challenge has worked out quite well. So thank you for suggesting that, Simon. Keep your suggestions and your challenges coming. I can never turn them down. I drilled holes in the baseboard so I could pass the wiring for the LEDs through. I covered the base of the pub in Uhu glue and then gently lowered the pub into the right place. At this point, the cellar steps are already glued in place, so they're not going to move. Once I was happy, it was in the right place. And this is a really sturdy building. The chimneys, slightly over scale, are a little bit chunky, but they did make it perfectly simple to add a couple of rulers and a pot, and then plenty of books onto the top of the building. And I left it like that while the glue dried. The ground at the back of the pub is a couple of millimetres lower than the ground at the front. So I made this wall complete with graffiti that descended in steps from the front to the back. I filled in the gap with milliput. That dries rock solid, after that I painted it brown. I like making buildings that go down lower than the ground around them. It makes it much easier to bed them into the landscape. I just cut strips of 2mm grey board card and glued them into place in a ribbed fashion like this, onto which I could put the ground later. Using the Scale Scenes Pavements Kit, I created a pavement to go along the front of the pub. I glued on little bits of extra here and there so that it would fit into the gaps beside the pub. To get it onto the layout, I basically covered the back of it in glue and placed it into place at the side of the road. I used Uhu again because I wanted it to grip and stick quite quickly. The side of the road and especially the underside of the arch aren't quite straight, so I had to push them with quite a lot of force into place so that the pavement bent a little bit but touched all the places where it needed to. I created ground out of card for the back of the pub. I then used a couple of strips of cereal packet underneath the arch so that when I glued the ground cover on it wouldn't be perfectly flat. I wanted it to look like an old cobbled street that started to sink in places. Once this was done, through trial and error, I created a correctly shaped piece of scale scenes cobblestone texture. I cut out a few holes. My plan was to make some puddles to show that the cobbles had disappeared and the ground had started to sink. I wasn't sure how well this was going to work. I slotted it into place and glued it on top of the strips of card that I added to help make the ground look uneven. I added a backyard for the pub using some dirty concrete texture that I had. I added this on top of one millimetre card. The reason being, I designed the doors of the pub to be two millimetres higher than the ground. I wanted there to be a step up into the yard and then a further step up into the pub. Once this was all done, we fast forward a little while and I've added some ground cover plants just using Woodland Scenics clump foliage and flock. 
and I've added a wall around the yard. I heavily weathered the whole thing with lots of black and smoke Humbrol weathering powder and then I varnished everything using my usual AK Interactive matte and ultra matte varnishes. The puddles are painted in dark brown, being careful to take away the white edge of the paper. I then very, very carefully dabbed in little bits of the gloss varnish that I used for the river. I needed to make sure that the varnish didn't go over onto the cobbles around it and that it stayed inside the recess created by the paper. So I added three, four, five, six more layers and eventually it does look as glossy as I wanted. It's a nice effect. They're still not perfectly level. I think the surface tension of the varnish brings them up a little bit. But from a normal viewing angle, these do look like three little puddles. I'm really pleased with how they've turned out. I used these laser cut dockside railings from Scale Model Scenery. Incredibly fine, beautiful models just made out of card. Glued these into place along the edge of the riverbank. I dropped the people onto the layout using super glue. I was really keen to have a man standing in the doorway of the pub because one of the pictures of the new beehive that I looked at right at the beginning of this project had a man having a sneaky cigarette or waiting for a friend in the doorway of the pub. It does set the scale of the building really nicely. I quite like this guy. If you're going to make a video of a building that you've spent almost 50 hours working on and you're going to show the gluing down of figures with super glue, you do not apply the super glue in your tweezers above the building you've just made, trying to get it on camera. If you do, you certainly don't get distracted to work out whether you're in shot or not, because what happens is the glue squirts out of your glue pot and dribbles down the front of your building like this. favourite part of any build, here a little look at some of the details that I like adding towards the end. I added the 12 chimney pots. I created this telephone cabinet box out of 2mm card based on the one that's outside the new beehive. This airboard advertises the Weir's famous pie night. It's complete with apostrophe mistakes. It makes a nice little touch outside the front of the pub. I cut the front steps that go up to the nice tiled porch just by hand out of pieces of card and then painted them and weathered them before sticking them to the layout. This sign shows that the weir on Tuesday is proudly presenting Wendy Wu. It was tricky to cut out these oval signs. The pub doesn't seem to be very much of a child-friendly place. The ghost sign on the side was done in Inkscape just before printing out. I was struggling to find a decent advert to go on the advertising hoarding, but thank you to Bernard on RM Web who took this photo of a Yellow Pages ad back in the summer of 1991. It's perfect, exactly what I need, and it's even got a few bits of torn edges on it. Underneath the arch, I added various bits and pieces of clutter, including tyres, a car, some traffic cones, and some barrels. As well as the bins and the people standing around outside, it makes it look murky, a little bit seedy. I added some new graffiti to the wall at the side of the pub. I don't know who Paddy and Lottie are, but well, I bet one of them was responsible for throwing the traffic cone in the river. Use a little bit of scale scenes, aged corrugated iron to create a bit of a temporary fence. And finally, the whole model was weathered using Humbrol smoke and black weathering powder. This was brushed on with a soft brush and then varnished in my usual varnishing regime. It's dried really nicely. I think it really helps bed the whole building into the landscape. I had a request from one of my favourite subscribers who said that she couldn't quite tell the scale of these buildings and she wanted some way to be able to tell. So mother, this is for you. Here's a one pence piece outside the front of the pub. You're never too old for your mum to watch your videos. She never misses an episode and if you don't want to miss an episode either, please consider subscribing. If you've liked what you've seen, please add a comment in the comments below. I really appreciate all the comments I get on my videos. I'm moving on to the station end next. So until then, stay safe, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.